done, Jonathan J. Ryan out here from More Gimmick Recon, and I'm coming at you with Tuesday's Pandemic Coffee Break. That's right, today is Tuesday, March 24, 2020, and we have another Pandemic Coffee Break here for you. So I am working from home, and while I'm working from home, like when I'm at work, I get to take a coffee break, and my coffee break is longer than some people's, as has been mentioned on YouTube. But this is actually how we do coffee break at work. It's one of the perks, I guess, of being a government worker, and um, just one of those things that we've done. So I want to start off, first of all, by saying hello, and I hope you have your beverage. I'm drinking tea, as I mentioned yesterday, Earl Grey Hot Decaf. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. A little bit of cream, and also I take two Splenda because I like it a little bit sweeter, but it's good stuff. So I hope all of you are doing well today and that you're continuing to move forward during this trying time that we all have. Uh, breaking news out of England yesterday was that the Prime Minister ordered everyone to shelter at home except for very few, very rare reasons to go out at all and to only do so and if you really need to like to go to the grocery store or uh, go to the pharmacy to get some prescriptions or uh, I guess what would you call the pharmacy over in um, England would you say the druggist is, is that what you say I don't know uh, please correct me if I'm wrong because I realized that it skipped from my head my hair's a little crazy today oh well that's how this goes so uh, we also have some News out of here in Massachusetts, where we are based, our governor had uh, decreed yesterday that as of noon today, uh, all non-essential businesses need to close. And there's a list of which ones can stay open, but also they are strongly recommending, but not requiring, but strongly recommending, please be smart about this, but strongly recommending that people stay home. And uh, some of the things that are open are um, airports, auto repair shops, auto supply stores, construction workers who work on houses, bridges, airports, and other infrastructure, convenience stores, teachers, uh, electricians, exterminators, food pantries, grocery stores, gas stations, hardware stores, that's one I would not have thought of, home appliance retailers and home improvement retailers, hotel workers, inspectors, laundromats, liquor stores. Now, I'm going to presume there must be a Massachusetts reason for why that's open. Uh, medical facilities, including medical marijuana establishments. So you can go and get your um, medical cannabis if you need it. Uh, the MBTA, which is our public transportation, online stores are allowed. So we'll come back to that. Pharmacies, pet supply, and food stores, which is good. Post office, port authority, security, shelters, utility companies, weather forecasters, wildlife management, and workers at places of worship. There's no ban on travel, trains, buses, subways, or to quote the John Candy uh, movie, um, pl and planes, trains, and automobiles uh, can continue to run. Um, but basically anything else is not allowed. And obviously in England, I know, for example, that uh, Hi, Jamie. Thank you for joining us this morning. I know over in England, for example, that businesses are closed. So, for example, uh, Jamie says hi. Hello. Uh, over, uh, for example, Warlord Games is actually um, doing some changes with how they're handling stuff. And I saw an email. So, if you're on the email list, you get it as well. But if not, we'll just let you know. So they are complying, and uh, they are going to keep on doing e-commerce or online sales, basically. So they're doing that until they are told that they are required to stop doing it, uh, and staff are working from home. So that's really cool. You can still place your orders. I don't know how they're fulfilling them, to be honest, because if they're working from home, right, they're not going to be at the warehouses, and so they can't ship stuff. So I'm really confused about that. But one thing that you can get, if you would like, because uh, this is being done from home, and they make some really uh, just beautiful pieces that I think anyone would be um, pleased to get, is Bad Squiddo Games. So you can head on over to their website, and I believe it's badsquiddogames.com, but we're going to double check that because... 
live. That's something we can do. But uh, if you're not familiar with them, Annie, who's the owner over there, she has created this company that sells realistic female miniatures for historical gaming. Absolutely beautiful pieces. She also has a love of bunnies and guinea pigs, so that endears me to her. Uh, Jamie says lots of UK firms are stopping their eShops too. Games Workshop, which I had heard about, Tabletop Combat as well. Um, yeah, people just, you need to be smart and safe. And Bad Squiddo is in a good position because since they are mostly home-based, <laughs> um, she's still able to do online sales that way, and the post, I guess, still comes to her and still can pick up stuff to bring out. And I believe the post still runs, so you can get all sorts of stuff. And I'm on their site now, and they just they have beautiful things on there. Like I keep on saying I want to buy some of their bunnies, and I've not done it yet, but this might be the time for me to buy their bunnies. Uh, and Jamie says, Ceresa Precision and Warlord are managing their warehouses with the skeleton staff. Um, how are they able to do that? They're supposed to close down businesses. How can they still have people in the warehouse? I'm... I'm really confused by it. Obviously, I don't know enough about what the Prime Minister's order is uh, for this particular situation, but they're able to do it. So I would say if you want stuff from any of these companies that are UK-based, and honestly, as Wargamers, a lot of the stuff that we love is in the UK, um, order now. <laughs> don't wait. And yesterday, we talked about a lot of discounts that you could get um, from companies, and I don't know that any of these were on that list that we gave. Uh, I do want to add one other one that's a discount, but we'll come back to that for a sec because I, I want to go and I want to find the Bad Squiddo bunnies because I know they have bunnies. So I'm just going to look up rabbits on their website. A rabbit? I think this is a case where they spell it differently because they it's like the pig, which is their guinea pigs. Um, the pigs... Uh, war stuff and then they have uh bunnies with it and i'm just why am i having trouble it's like i'm just not doing well today people i seem to be having issues uh jamie says she meaning uh bad squirtle games really does have great stuff and he has a guinea pig that's a guinea pig model right not an actual guinea pig because you've never mentioned a real guinea pig to me but that'd be awesome if you actually did have a real guinea pig. I've thought of getting one from time to time because they make great friends for bunnies. Uh, but uh, we already have two bunnies, so <laughs> taking a guinea pig out would be kind of crazy. So I'm looking at their um, bunny stuff. Oh, this is so cute. <laughs> I'm just getting a lot. Check out badscoodlegames.com, everyone, because it's just it's really cute what they have and they have all sorts of stuff and oh look at all the animals they just get me so excited <laughs> i love animals oh here we go bunnies so you get eight bunnies for six pounds 28 millimeter metal um, sculpted by joe brumby and they are just cute bunnies and i'd be afraid of um messing them up but I think I'm going to order some bunnies because <laughs> I really want bunnies. So I don't know. That's really cool. Um, let's go over to the good news before I, I share some sad news with everyone. So I want to just mention that um, some of you may have heard we've mentioned Trilaterum games before in the past. We've actually interviewed them, done video work with them, and they do uh, sci-fi 15 millimeter game which is like their own design timothy colonna's kind of done it and run with it and it's really cool looking they came up with a gaming mat that's really nice it's like as soft as cigar box battle it uh i got to <laughs> i saw it at um where were we the makerspace game fair i guess last fall it must have been god that feels like a long time ago another lifetime uh so we're there and i took it and i said to timothy you're gonna make them weird but like I need to do a thing because that's what I do with the mat. So I took it in, and I'm like, I'm cuddling it and snuggling it. And I wrapped it around myself like a cape. And I was like, yeah, this is nice. And I can't remember where he got it printed, but it's gorgeous. So you can buy it from his website, trilateralgames.com. But what he's doing right now, and this is one of the reasons why I mentioned the mat, is they have a coupon code that they're using. So if you use coupon code, no show, all caps, you get a sale 
going on and I'm just trying to pull up their website so I can um, tell you exactly what you're going to get um, for percent off. But they have all sorts of really cool 15 millimeter stuff, including new um, sci-fi 15 millimeter um, like humanoid models that they're doing. So let's see, coupon code no show gives you 10% off all products and free shipping if you're in the US. And if you're overseas, it's not free shipping, but you do still get 10% off. So that's worth considering and looking at. Hey, Adam, thank you for joining us today. Just talking about how Trilateral Games has 10% off and free shipping for US customers and 10% off for everyone else in the world if you order from them using coupon code no show. So adding that to our list of companies that are given discounts. Mm. Earl Grey, gotta love it. Uh, and speaking of discounts and things that are going on, I want to show you more progress has been made on my outhouse. And the light is terrible, so let's see if I can actually do something a little crazy. Hold on. We're going to do use an alternate light source. Okay, here we go. All right. <laughs> oh, this is actually working somewhat. Okay. Yeah, we turn... So you can see I added some mud, that's sterling mud in there. And I put it on the ground, figuring like they're going in right there. Russian, I don't know, laborers, workers. Uh, hey, Rob, thank you for joining us. Uh, and that they're going to have muddy feet, right? They're working in the fields. And that they're probably not going to be too clean about things. So there's mud all inside. And because, like now, there's a pandemic... <laughs> They ran out of toilet paper, so it just stuff got everywhere inside. They just couldn't wipe their bottoms, is what it was. And um, so that's one way to have a little bit of fun with that. You can see it's all over the seat and stuff. Someone's gonna have to clean that out, do a little mucking, uh, muckraking in there, and see what they can do. So this is almost done. I have a little bit more touch up to do, just around the edges where the sprue was released uh, and things like that. And then the door has to get put on. I've actually done it. Um, door's painted and everything. Maybe a little more dry brushing on this piece and get it going. Uh, howdy, Rob, to you too. And so we'll just do a little more dry brushing on this. Glue the door on. And the door actually fits a little loose. Or I thought it'd be a tighter fit with this piece. So it's going to be one of those where you get to glue it. Sorry, everyone, for smacking the microphone. That's poor mic technique on my end. Uh, it's going to be one of those where you have to glue and then hold it in so i'm going to be holding it for a while which I, i'm not honestly pleased about but it's one of those things and then i'll do the basing and get some mud going around and all that i really do love the gw uh sterling mud i think it's fantastic it's a great color you don't actually have to do anything with it other than put it on you could dry brush it if you like i like to use a little sylvaneth bark um for just about any sort of brown dry brushing and put that on and then this one will be done and you can actually see obviously it's not the same figures but here my little barbarian's like oh my i'm too big i can't fit in what will i do i really need to go use the bathroom oh well it's too dirty anyway um can you tell i've been hanging out at home with the kids too often hey mark thank you for joining us uh so i've also been working on some other kits Woo. Oh, I did bring the door. <laughs> so the door actually has some nice features. It has a nice little heart on it, which I think is kind of cool. And a little hole near the bottom. And the standard uh, Z framing method that all of the things in the basement kits have for the doors. At least all the ones that I've done so far. So it's pretty cool. But what I've also been working on are picket fences. Dun, dun, dun. So these are beautiful picket fences. And you get the base, the framing, and then you put the actual picket fence on. So one of the cool things is um, I did the bases, which let's get that light again. <laughs> Thank you, iPhone. There we go. So I don't actually block the camera. Uh, and you can kind of see, we'll get better pictures on social media. Sorry about that. Um, see that again, I used... Uh, the sterling mud for that and just kind of went ahead I and um, done that so this was fun and easy to assemble this uh, mark says I need more outhouses there were never enough in the wild west that's true I'm hoping the cowboys and everyone who are using 
your outhouses keep them cleaner, Mark, than these Russian <laughs> villagers have kept this one. Because stuff just got everywhere because they ran out of toilet paper. What can I say? Life is hard <laughs> in Soviet Russia. Rich, hi. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so a neat thing about these kits here from Things in the Basement. You notice there's a gap here. And I love that there's this attention to detail that's done. So York has created some fence pieces that have the gap. And he's given you the fence piece by itself. So you could either just put it in front, which I think looks a little weird. You can lay it down flat. You can have it come through. Leave it off, which is what I think I'm going to do. I'm just going to have the gap in it as well. And uh, see how it goes. Uh, Mark says, well, at least we have doors. The door's just not on yet, Mark. It's pretty, too. See, it has a heart on it and everything. Because in Soviet Russia, outhouses love you. See, it'll look something like this. You know, when I glue it and it's not looking all janky. <laughs> so we'll do that and get that going. Um, I did not finish all the fences. So this is what I have left. You see, there's some regular fences here and here to do. And then this is the gate, which I've not done yet. So here's um, where the gate will actually go on. So these pieces right here, right, are the outer edge. So one goes here, if I'm pointing correctly, and one goes over here. And that will hold this piece and this piece. <coughs> and then this piece is like the arm of the gate. So it'll actually get put right in this hole right here. You put it in, you want to swing it inwards a little bit, and then you put the main gate on as well. Uh, hi, Mike. It's nice to see you. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask about huzzah, unlike some people, because you have enough pressure as is, so don't worry about that. Um, but one thing I did when I was making these, I actually did all the basing first, and then I glued in the supports, and then I put the front on. And I tell you, it was a messy thing to do. I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to do it this way, because that way I won't get any sterling mud on the actual posts and the supports. But I don't think that matters. So I think for these last ones, just for my sanity, I'm going to glue the posts in to the base first. Then I'm going to put the sterling mud on. And then I'm going to put on all of um, the actual rest of it and see how that goes. And you can probably notice right here, I actually talked yesterday about something. He has a little piece that I didn't push out right here. And these had a ton of them to push out. Not as bad as there's another fence, a regular kind of fence that has really thin slivers. And so I mentioned about using my Pixnor um, tweezers, which some people use for um, beauty care of your skin if you have um, pimples and things to kind of remove them. Uh, but I find they're really good for this kind of stuff or holding little um, tufts, grass tufts that you're going to put on. So I poke out all these holes, of course. No, where is it again? Yeah, so right here. So I poke out all these holes. Then I save them. And I mix them in with my ballast or my static grass or whatever and use it as some basing material to kind of make things look like rubble or whatever. So I have all these little kits, um, containers really, that it goes in and I have different mixtures that I've pre-done. And it just makes life a little bit easier for all of that kind of stuff. So it's really cool. Um, Mark says, oh, I missed that part. I was a little late talking about the door for the outhouse. It's okay. Um, door here. It'll go together. Uh, and I was saying that I'm not looking forward to this because it's not a tight fit. It's a little loose. And if it was tighter, and maybe this is probably me just being picky. Uh, I wish it was a little tighter because you could put the glue on and just go and it would stay. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, no, it stayed. So then it would stay, but now you're going to have to do it, and I'm going to have to hold it and hold it and wait and wait and wait. So that's a little annoying. It's a little more labor-intensive. And this whole kit's been more labor-intensive than I thought, but I tell you, I love this outhouse. I want, like, a gazillion more of them, not because I'm doing westerns or anything, but I just think there needs to be a lot of outhouses in my uh, Russian village that's getting worked on uh, because why the heck not? Uh, 
I'd love to know what all of you are working on. So if you have any kits or games that you're playing or things that you're doing, please either comment in this video, which will also be on YouTube. So maybe you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, comment below. Uh, and if you are watching YouTube, please subscribe and hit the bell so you get all our notifications for when things come out. Um, or also on our Facebook page, um, uh, either on the group, rather, uh, fan club group. I'd like to know what games you're playing, what you're doing, and everything's going on. Uh, Rob says, cut all those screws with nippers makes great rubble. Rob, you are 100% correct. So we have a lot of this. And usually I will take this MDF, the remains. And actually, you know what? I'm going to be rude. I'm going to step away and show you some. Okay. So that's something I can never do in podcast recording, but this is live stream. So this is okay. Uh, so usually I take all the empty sprues. This is from the outhouse and I recycle them if I can. Uh, you can't always, but I mean, these are wood. Uh, so you could potentially recycle them or they end up in the trash, but you're right. You could just cut them up with side cutters and that's a good way to reuse this uh, and get more stuff out of it. So like these nice long pieces could be poster stuff. You get interest in corners for things, any size that you need. This one would be really interesting because you have the remains of the fence. So you could get some cool kind of looking things there that could be all sorts of stuff. So that's a really great tip, Rob. Thank you for suggesting that for people. Uh, and you just get some really neat things and neat designs out of them. This is a crinkle paper, which I talked about yesterday. And... Let me turn my camera, uh, my not camera flashlight off because I actually want to respond to some comments. So some of you joined us later yesterday and I didn't get to um, see all your comments. Uh, so I just want to respond to some of them as I said I would. So Mark yesterday said, I don't usually spray buildings that wood holds the paint better than plastic or lead. So I was talking about, which is over there, so I'm not going to get it, but I was talking about how I not yet use like testers dull coat or anything on my finished uh, tent barracks for my Yamashiro mountain fort. And that was something I was going to do, but I wondered about doing it because of the crinkle paper that's used for the tent. And I didn't know if it would make it brittle or anything and how that would work. So I asked about it and Jorg, who is the designer of the kit and owner of things in the basement said sailing should work. I asked him if he used matte varnish on his kit, and he said, quote, I think I did, not exactly sure. I usually spray a thin layer of matte varnish over completed kits, but not always immediately. Uh, he suggested that I try it on a scrap piece of crinkle paper, which I've not done yet because I can't find my um, matte varnish. I know it's here somewhere. I just I don't know where I put it. Uh, life's a little crazy, so i got to find it. But I have my crinkle paper that I can use <laughs> and spray it and see what happens before I do it on the actual kit. I'm sure it'll be fine. I just, I'd hate for it to get all brittle and flake apart after I did all the work on the kit. I'd be like, oh man, I'd be so disappointed. Uh, but that's just me as well. Um, the bit of not good news that I want to share is, um, I don't know if any of you are fans of graphic novels and comics, but one of the co-creators of Asterix passed away. Um, Mr. Uderzo uh, just recently died, I believe today actually, or yesterday, depending on either the 23rd or the 24th of March. Uh, so I was sad to hear about that. I love the Asterix graphic novels. The comics are amazing. It's really funny and well done. Set in ancient Rome with the Gauls and Julius Caesar's in there and even Cleopatra. They're just really humorous and something I love to read. And so I feel the need to go back and read them all again. But of course... Businesses are closed, so try to get it online maybe or, or read it. Maybe my local library has it digitally for people to get. I'll have to take a peek at and check it out. And speaking of digital, I've been watching The Last Kingdom, which I really enjoy. I just finished season one, which covers the first two books, I believe. And I realize that I've fallen behind in the books. So there's one or two novels I've not yet read, and I was able to get one of them digitally from my library we have this thing called overdrive that we use that it's like all over the world i believe you can get at it and i'm just trying to pull up the name of the book to make sure i'm telling you which book that i read um 
or woolly reading actually. And um, it's not in here. Well, I can't tell you. I'll tell you t- tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Thank you for joining us today as we're doing our live stream. Um, and actually, speaking of tomorrow, I should say that my wife and I are both working from home. Uh, and that means we're doing things a little differently. So tomorrow, we normally would do a 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time live stream, coffee break, pandemic coffee break live stream. It's being pushed back because my wife has a meeting at 10. It'll probably be about an hour. So I'm planning to do the coffee break live stream at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. So you'll get the notifications when we go live. You'll see that and all the stuff as usual. But if you're like sitting around thinking, oh, I can't wait to watch. It's 1030. And where is he? Jonathan should be on. What's going on? Did he come down with the coronavirus? Answer is no. <laughs> or at least knock on wood. I hope I don't. Because it would be really bad if I do. I'm asthmatic. And that's like the last thing. I'm in such a high risk category. We do not want that to happen to me. Please. <laughs> that's just like, that'd be awful. Really, just don't do it to me, please. Um, no, it's because my wife has a meeting at 10. A virtual meeting, of course. And uh, <laughs> so she'll be in the studio here doing her virtual meeting while I'll be working uh, from home upstairs, but with the baby. Uh, so she can have her meeting and stuff. So that means things get pushed back a little bit for that. And I do want to mention that there's some cool stuff that we're doing here at Wargaming Recon. And the first thing is... Um, I want to tell you that we have a new article coming out on the website. It'll be out later today, later on March 24th, 2020. And it relates to The Last Kingdom, actually. So I'm trying to pull it up. And my computer's insisting on updating Steam because I've been playing games (laughs) when I'm not working. Uh, Come on, Steam. Let me get to the website. Uh... Rob says, if you like Caesar and Rome Gaul, try listening to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Fascinating podcast about that subject. Steam, don't block my site. Fascinating podcast about that subject and many others. Nathan, thank you for joining us. Hello. Uh, Yes, I'm not unfamiliar with uh, Dan Carlin's podcast. And I got to make a statement. I'm going to whisper it because it's just between us. I'm not really a fan because... He goes on too long and you can't get all the subjects as some of them are hidden behind paywalls and he doesn't give as much information as I thought he would. So I'm in a minority. Please don't hang me over that. Um, so yes, uh, Dean Carlin's hardcore history is beloved by all and many, 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 many people love it. And so if it's your sort of thing. People should check that out as well. Please don't murder me because I said, I don't really like it, but that's okay. It's just me. He does a good job anyway. Um, So check that out if that's your thing and if that's something that you're into. Uh, Here we go. Get into our website, wargamingrecon.com. I don't think I mentioned this actually, but we actually have a second part, I think it is, in the Muses Miniatures um, series of how to paint articles, which is already up. It's been up for a few days. So if you go to wargamingrecon.com, you'll get that. Um, but she talks about cleaning models, the importance of cleaning them, getting rid of mold lines and uh, all flash and that kind of stuff, what tools to use, and also how to pin a model, which is really cool and, um, for me, invaluable uh, because um, – which finger did I do? I think it was this thumb. Uh, I dremeled through once trying to do pinning on uh, a Games Workshop Lord of the Rings orc guy. No, what was it? Troll. It was a troll, a cave troll. One of the ones, you know, he's like this. He's like, oh, I'm going to be. And I was trying to do it. I dremeled through my thumb and, oh, man, that hurt like heck. The blood was crazy just how much came out. And oddly enough, I kept my cool about it. I didn't scream like a little girl, uh, which is normally my go-to, as I probably should admit. But it's true. <laughs> So uh, that's just how it is with that. Uh, Rob says, no problem. Your experience may vary with the Dan Carlin's podcast. Really, a lot of people love it. So again, if that's your thing, check it out. Um, 
I go elsewhere for history kind of topics. Uh, and there's all sorts of different things. But he's very, very, very popular. So people should check that out as well. Uh, and then the article I'm talking about, uh, Mr. Greg Ship has written it. And he has another one he's working on too. Our authors are going like crazy just creating content for all of you. So this is really cool. So he has an article called Scott's Picks War Band from Footsore Miniatures. We talks about, uh, as you would guess, some Scots and Picks miniatures from Footsore Miniatures and just kind of uh, why he was getting them and some information about them and things like that. So that'll be out later today, probably during my lunch break. When I have time, I'll get that out and going and people can get all of that. So I see actually my lunch, um, lunch break, my coffee break is coming to an end. So again, I want to thank all of you for watching the video and joining us for our, our daily coffee break. I want to remind you that the coffee break, the pandemic coffee break for Wednesday, March 25th has been pushed back to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I believe I'm adding one on Thursday now that, uh, um, the governor has declared that all businesses, non-essential businesses have to be closed. It means I'm no longer allowed to go to work. And actually, my boss told me yesterday she did not want me coming in the building anymore because I'm in such a high-risk category. She just, just didn't, she doesn't want me to get really sick is what it is. So she cares, and I appreciate that. So announcement, Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m., except for tomorrow, Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, pandemic coffee break <laughs> here at Morgan Marie Con for as long as... I'm working from home and the pandemic continues. Um, as much as I like working from home, really, I just, I wish the pandemic would stop, please. Uh, we don't really need it. And then I mentioned yesterday about the Misfits Market. Uh, so if any of you are interested in that, check out misfitsmarket.com. If you want more information, talk to me. I have a coupon code I can give you. You get 25% off your order. Uh, we just got another shipment on Sunday and we loved it. Uh, just my wife made this really delicious soup. Um, Mark says, I'll be on a bus at 11 tomorrow. Sorry to miss it. But Mark, don't worry, because you can always come to Wargaming Recon. Go to our Facebook page, and the video was always there. You can watch it after. Comment on it, because then we'll reply to it later on. Or on YouTube, you can check out our channel over there. We'll have a link everywhere, really, uh, to our YouTube channel. But I think it's like wargamingrecon.com slash YouTube should bring you to it, I believe. We created a special link for it so people can go and watch this on youtube after the fact or on our facebook page where it's get saved for after the fact so don't worry even if you can't join us live as part of the coffee break you can still do it later on whenever you have your own coffee break or tea break or elevenses or, or whatever oh i'll be having elevenses tomorrow that's exciting or whatever it is that you're doing so that's okay um please everyone be smart, stay safe, be healthy. If you're not feeling well, stay home. Listen to the experts. Listen to the scientists and the doctors and the medical people. Please just be well, be good, be kind to one another. These are difficult times. Remember, no matter what you're doing, you're doing the best you can. Do not beat yourself up about it. Um, really, we're just, we're just trying, all of us. Uh, we're doing what we can. So really be kind to yourself. Don't forget that. It's really important. Please be good and kind to yourself. Be kind to everyone else around you. And until next time, we'll be back with another We're Giving Recon pandemic coffee break tomorrow, March 25th, which is a Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, just because my wife has a meeting. You check us out on all the things as War Gaming Recon. I'm tweeting. I'm on Facebook. I'm Snapchatting and Instagramming. Um, I don't know what the short version of Instagram it is because on Snapchat, you're snapping right in on Twitter. You're tweeting. Uh, you're Facebooking, I guess. I, I don't know. Someone can explain it to me. Who knows better? Uh, I tried the whole TikTok thing, but uh, other than watching that No No Square video that I think it was in Sweden that group put on, which they don't meant, didn't mean it to be funny, but like it makes me laugh. So the other night I really needed a laugh and I watched that over and over and I was just I was so red in the face I couldn't breathe. I got an asthma attack out of it actually, but it was well worth it. So, um, yeah, but other than that, I just, I can't get into the TikTok. It's really young kids. And I'm not that young anymore. So anyway, thank you for watching it again. And you know the drill, no matter how busy you are, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how much time you're thinking, how many outhouses do I need? And really how messy are they going to be on the inside? 
answer is very because they ran out of toilet paper so it goes everywhere you know that you gotta you need to you have to that's right keep on gaming thanks folks